the way that I would say it, this is Alango's way of saying it, and it's beautiful, is that you have at the very beginning this mysterious force that we can't, we can't understand um, what that mysterious for force is. We don't know what it is. It's a total mystery, this mysterious force which creates everything. We can never look back at it in form, but yet it is in all form. So many people call the source consciousness, but that's not the way I see it. I come from more of a Buddhist background, and I see consciousness, even though I sometimes say the source is consciousness, that's just out of the laziness of the way I speak, because it's easy sometimes to say that to someone. And also, when people are new to the subject, it's way easier to say it's consciousness, because you can point to consciousness as looking at the person. But actually, consciousness comes... Is, a, is, is part of the manifestation. So it's total emptiness, which is down here, or wholeness. So we have the total emptiness, wholeness part. And then the first things that comes is the consciousness. So if you put the consciousness here, the first thing that comes is that consciousness, the empty looking. And this all, you can't even say it the first thing that comes because you can't actually separate it out it all happens in one instantaneous explosion. It's happening now. So you've got this consciousness, and then instantly with the consciousness, there has to be a form that it looks through. So you've got the body-mind, and as soon as there's the possibility to look through something, there is then the amnes, and then the whole world. But this doesn't happen actually separately. The consciousness isn't prior to the body-mind or prior to amnes. It's like one explosion, and all of these stages are needed. So you have the consciousness, you need body-mind to look through, an instrument to, for the consciousness to look through. So it's got, in this case, the body-mind. And you also have to have this sense of presence, presence, which is I am. And I might be wrong about all of this stuff, but I get the sense that Kali is the I am part and that Shiva is the consciousness part. But actually, God, the true mysterious force is even beyond consciousness. We don't know what it is. Consciousness, no, we can never know that. We can sense it. We can sense that consciousness and that amnes, and it's like, um, like a, like that, that is like the direct actor, like, like the manifestation of God the manifestation of your knowing, this awakeness that knows everything, and this sense of I am, of being. It's not anybody's I am, it's just immediate sense of being. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the I am, I sometimes, the way I see it, is the I am kind of goes into everything. It's the love side, it's that explosion of everything. The consciousness is the stillness in the experience, is that radical sense of knowing that's absolutely still. And the I am is this love that is the explosion to everything. Prior to my awakening, even though I'd realized it many times, I always thought that that I am, that sense of love, belonged inside my body. I always thought, even though I'd had many awakenings, and even the the consciousness had been seen many times and there had been this energetic awakening of consciousness, I still in some way believed that that sense of existence, that sense of isness, belonged in here. But it actually doesn't. That isness, that amness is everywhere and this is the love part. There is no outside of I amness. So I appear in that sense of being. This is the love. Everything does, the floor, all sensations, the light. And you, you can feel this. Remember I said about just stepping in the river. I'm not, in one way I'm a great intellect in comparison to the whole of humanity, but in comparison to the non-duality speakers, I'm not maybe one of the great intellects. But just step into that river, even though ultimately you can't, you know what I mean. There's a part of you that's like, no, I want to get it exactly intellectually right but just step into that flow and just give up trying to be right or trying to know it intellectually and that I am is everywhere you never see outside of I am that amness is in all faces is in the curtains is in this is in my the sound of my voice as is 
that knowing, that recognition that this is appearing. And they both belong together. And I sometimes see that consciousness or say, it feels like that the consciousness is the stillness part, is the emptiness part to this, because consciousness is so empty. Like it's, there's nothing there, it knows, but nothing else. And then the am side, the present side, is, is the love side, is the heart of it. And taste that, feel that, know that beyond me telling you. And you look for that love everywhere. Consciousness, I'm not sure if you're looking for so much everywhere. The consciousness part, the emptiness part, you're like, Mrr. but the love part, you look for everywhere. That's what you really want out of life, is that love, is that completion. But they come together, the love and that emptiness. In a way, they have to come together. Love has to be totally empty in order to be true, unconditioned love. So the separate person, when it identifies that I amness and the consciousness gets sucked inside the body, when the baby identifies, it suddenly feels like there is a conscious being that is looking through this body. And in that, it has the seed of loss. And uh, until this is seen, until there's awakenings, you can't really know this. But it feels like you lost love deep down and then you spend your life looking for that love in being successful in women in men in ideas in the intellect it's all you ever wanted nothing more <laughs> 